Governor Mead, welcome to the Star Tribune. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming in. Well, so first, uh, first thing, let's say you're reelected governor. What's the first policy decision you'd make? Well, uh, the first policy decision I'd make is to continue some of the policies we have, which is the energy strategy, the water strategy, the fourth health, forest health strategy. Uh, I just this morning uh, uh, met with the Wyoming Water Association, and we we're talking about the water strategy. And uh, in my last state of the state, I brought up the importance of that. And I just think that is something we, we all of us in Wyoming, have to key on. And so that would certainly going to be a, a top priority for me if, I, if re elected for the next four years. So this kind of feeds into this. What would you define as the top three goals of a second new term? Well, of course, uh, an overriding goal is uh, the, you have to be able to handle situations you don't necessarily plan on uh, to do a good job managing the state. And I'm particularly referencing, you know, my first year in office, we had tremendous floods across the state. My second year in office, uh, we had uh, fires across the state, spent about $45 million fighting the fires. I'm not saying I caused the floods or the fires, but it just was the way it is. And that's the nature of being governor is you do not know uh, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, what's going to happen. You can have a plan, but you have to be able to react to those things. And certainly having you know, good staff, uh, good people in the agencies uh, helps you do that. And so we will continue to do that. Uh, but in terms of the top three, uh, obviously we'll continue, as I said, with the energy strategy, uh, with the water strategy. Uh, forest health, that's sort of on the natural resource side. Uh, then on the you know economic development side, as I've talked to this editorial board before, I, I think we need to take a serious look in this state in terms of uh, our investments and how we're using, you know, collectively, you know, collectively in, in all different coffee cans uh, in the state, depending upon the market. And we're looking at 19 to 20 billion dollars uh, in, in different savings right now. And I give speeches about this because it's important to recognize when we're doing that, we're investing in other states, we're investing in other companies in other states, and we're investing in other countries. You need to do that to have a diversified portfolio. That's a responsible thing to do. But uh, as we build up uh, in the rainy day uh, count, the LSRA was about $800 million when I came into office. It's going to be $2 billion uh, in a blink of an eye now. And what is the money for? Uh, it's a rainy day fund. But when we uh, look back to 2008, 2009, the stock market took a dip and overnight we had hundreds of millions of dollars in losses that we covered with gains uh, subsequent to that. And that's not from, uh, you know, poor management, that's just the nature of the market. And so I think one of the focuses, uh, certainly the next four years if re-elected, is to say we need to continue to have robust savings. But as I have tried to do on, uh, you know, case uh, uh, session by session basis, get our money back to local government and economic development, I think we ought to even take a broader approach and say, listen, we ought to think about what is the rainy day fund for? And if we're going to invest, we need to see, you know, a private company, they don't earn all their profits and then put it in another company. Uh, they continue to build the company and we need to continue to build Wyoming and work on infrastructure. Uh, we need to make sure our towns and counties are strong, and we need to continue to work on economic development. Uh, I know Wyoming people, I know the Wyoming work ethic, and I see the progress that we've had the last four years in terms of the low unemployment, uh, the fast, second fastest growing GDP. And, you know, I, uh, we do need a diversified portfolio, but if Wyoming was a, a stock or a company, uh, we're better to, to invest your money and in, in, in back into Wyoming. And that should be part of the diversity as well, not on an ad hoc basis, session to session, but a long-term plan on how we're going to continue to build Wyoming at our community colleges, the University of Wyoming, roads, bridges, water, sewer, broadband connectivity. These are the things that have made us strong in the first place. I will tell you, we do not have a strong economy right now if we have no highways. <laughs> If we have no no good school, if our schools are good, if our roads, our bridges, our sewer systems are not good, we have to support that which puts us in a good position to uh, succeed economically. And so, um, it's time uh, for the state to have that discussion about how we're investing our money. I've gone on some long on that question. What was the, the question? The 
was asking about top three goals. Top three. So, so uh, uh, on the uh, the minerals, uh, uh, natural resources. Uh, then, secondly, uh, in terms of investment, and then uh, third, uh, you know, as part of, uh, I want to say, on the second part, part of that, of course, is uh, continue the uh, what we have done with regard to broadband, which. Uh, we are going to have by springtime a 100 gigabit backbone in the state uh, that supports uh, our state buildings and our schools. And we have designed it specifically so the private sector can tap into that. And that will also be part of uh, the, the second thing. The third thing is, um, you know, I, I have seen results uh, uh, in the state. We have fewer employees now than we did uh, four years ago. But we've also been able to support those employees uh, by finally getting them raises uh, just last year. And we have to continue to, to, to look at that um, in terms of making sure our government is where it needs to be in terms of size, uh, but then recognizing the value of having those good employees and make sure they're in a good position. Uh, last, a little over a year ago now, I asked every agency to reduce its rules uh, by 30%. Yeah, and um, I, they, what was meant to be whispers around the cabinet meeting turned out to be audible, which was this, what is he thinking about? But the fact of the matter is we've reduced rules in uh, our, our agencies. The idea wasn't to change the substance of the rules it w as much as it was the nature of rules. They just grow and grow and nobody cleans out the dead wood. And in doing that, we provide efficiencies and we provide a more user-friendly uh, state. We want to be able to say, uh, if you need to open up your business, here's the rules and regulations. So the second part of that is working with the Secretary of State's office to make them easily searchable. In other words, I'm going to open up such and such business making widgets, for example. I may not know all the agencies that would be involved in that, but I should be able to put in there, this is what I want to do, and the rules come to me rather than me searching the rules. We think that is going to be a big part of it. Um, in terms also, uh, you know, uh, those are some of the things we're working on. I think along with that is um, as we see challenges to coal, um, even challenges to oil, gas, uranium, the fluctuations in market, uh, as the leading exporter of energy, I think we also have an obligation to be a leader in innovation and technology to address those challenges, and uh, both with education, both in the private sector, and uh, partnerships uh, to find answers to challenges in the energy business. So assess if you were the state of Wyoming's relationship with the federal government. How would it change under a second lead term? Well, I, I don't know that it would change very much. Uh, you know, I have, for example, one of the agencies uh, that we work a lot with is uh, the Department of Interior. And I have a good working relationship with Secretary Jewell, and I had a good working relationship with Secretary Zalazar. Uh, and we... Uh, you know, Secretary uh, Jewell was out here uh, a couple of weeks ago and recognized the work Wyoming, and not just me as a governor, but the, the previous uh, governor, Governor Friedenthal, and his leadership on that. Um, and we have a good working relationship, but there is areas, obviously, of disagreement, but areas of agreement as well. You know, when the Wolf decision came out from Judge Jackson, it, we have to remember it wasn't us versus the feds. Uh, the feds uh, were on the same page. Uh, the director of the Fish and Wildlife, Dan Ash, good relationship with him. He and I and Secretary Salazar, uh, you know, we, we put that plan together. So, you know, the the fact is, um, I think you have to maintain those good relationships, but respect the fact we are going to have disagreements uh, and serious disagreements. Um, you know, with the EPA, we have serious disagreements, for example, on waters of the U.S. and, and other issues. And um, that doesn't mean it has to be hostile. Uh, it, it just means that uh, we have a clear understanding that we have an ability and we can work on problems together and we can solve problems together. But we will have disagreements, and when those disagreements are important to the state, we're going to challenge them. So that's with the relationship between the governor's office and the legislature. What would change, what would change there under a second term? Well, I think, uh, you know, it's it's probably not even a second term. I think uh, the nature of this job is every every day and every year when the session comes to an end, um, you know, I take note of where I think we've had success and where we've had failures, both in terms of, you know, individual bills, but also in terms of how we approached it. Uh, have we made the outreach necessary? Did we do the right debates, the right discussions uh, with the legislature. And then the legislature is going to change as well. 
Um, and I have a good working relationship, uh, as I think I've told you, during the session, uh, at least once a week I have the Republican leadership come in and uh, have the Democrat leadership come in, not at the same time, uh, and have discussions about what's going on in, in the state. Uh, we have agreements and, and disagreements on that. But, uh, you know, we, we don't always see uh, eye to eye. I don't always see eye to eye with uh, the Democrats or, or the Republicans. And uh, I'd point to what I have tried to do in the past with regard to the previous issue I brought up in terms of how we're investing our money and how it should be done, and uh, you know whether or not uh, we're, you know, it's important to save, uh, and you know sometimes they classify it as savers versus spenders, uh, but you can also be, you know, it could be hoarder versus uh, builder, and uh, we're not a bank, and and we need to so. You know, when I propose diverting one half of one percent of the statutory uh, money that goes into the permanent fund into local governments and roads, uh, you know, I was the only one in that building that apparently thought that was a good idea. So the relationship uh, will always be cordial uh, because uh, I, I just think that Wyoming is too small uh, for us to say, if I disagree with you also, I have to dislike you. That just doesn't work in Wyoming. So the relationship will stay cordial. We'll continue to have agreements, and we'll continue just to have uh, disagreements. So, in terms of changes, you know, we'll have uh, there will be different people in office. The, some of the issues will be different, uh, but that cordial relationship will remain. So you you talked about this a little bit with innovation previously, but as far as uh, ensuring the, the viability of Wyoming coal, what what will you do? in the future to ensure that? Well, we'll continue on with some of what we've been doing. You know, as, uh, you know I've made tr uh, trips out to uh, uh, British Columbia and a uh, trip to Washington. Uh, we've made trips overseas. I believe part of what we need to do uh, is what we have started with my trip to Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, is as those countries are importing energy, and most of those three I just mentioned import uh, over 90 percent of their energy. And as their energy portfolio mix changes from uh, more nuclear uh, to, you know, when Fukushima happened, now they're looking at other sources. Uh, we need them uh, in traveling to Taiwan, for example, and meeting with Taipei Power. They don't just want coal, they want Wyoming coal. They recognize that it uh, is great coal in terms of quality and in terms of wool sulfur coal. We need their help in saying, not only is this a Wyoming push to get coal out of these ports, but in addition to that, it's a, it's a pull from countries that are great trading partners and great uh, friends to the United States. And we don't want, that is the United States, we don't want to be cutting off those great countries that are of great help to us in their economic development because, and ultimately that hurts us. If those countries are suffering economically because they don't have the energy uh, needs met, uh, that hurts us. So we're going to focus some more on that. Can they? provide a pull as we're providing a push. Um, you've seen that uh, in traveling to uh, the state of Washington, I, I think that the Millennium Port, I think it will come about. We have to continue to be in a position to answer questions from everything, uh, you know, from coal dust to train traffic. I think a lot of those issues, uh, or at least some of those issues, can be put aside. I think they, uh, as the education process has continued, I think they recognize some of those perhaps aren't real issues, but there are some real issues. For example, train traffic, that's a tangible issue that we have to work through. Uh, so I think that the state, uh, as we have put money and uh, time into that, I think we need to continue to work to resolve those issues uh, in Washington and in Oregon and continue to look at, you know, British Columbia as well. But that, um, you know, the coal companies need that. Uh, uh, when we see the number of coal-fired plants shutting down, they need to have that ability to export. Uh, Cloud Peak already exports some, but I think it's about 8 million tons, uh, you know, and we're looking at, you know, 80 million, uh, 100 million tons in order to offset uh, what you see, the, the crunch on coal companies. Um, and as I, I told this board, I think, two times ago, you know, we have to recognize that states have different views on this than maybe we do. And, you know, if somebody was coming to Wyoming and says, Wyoming, you have to do this, uh, you know, we, we would bow our backs. And so we have to go about it the right way. We're not just going to go in there and demand that they do it. We have to go in there 
and uh, try to work with those states. Talking about the, good, uh, the idea of a good old boy network, which certainly came up uh, kind of a theme for, for most, of your, uh, most of your opponents in this race. Uh, I, I, have, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, just haves and has nots, uh, it's certainly come up quite a bit. Do you buy the idea of the good old boys? And if, if so, uh, are you one of them? I just, uh, when they all said that, I just thought they were saying I was a good guy. I didn't take any offense at all. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't like that. Uh, uh, I don't like um, that uh, uh, strategy or technique where you say, you know, there's, we're going to create divisions in the state. And there's, there, there's some people here that are the haves or the some or have nots. And this group is good and this group is bad. I don't think that's productive or conducive. I, I think that there is, it's legitimate to say I disagree with these people about this issue or I agree with this, these people about this issues. But when you start saying uh, the good old boys, one is what it says to me is in your mind, you've identified who are good people and who are bad people. And you've identified the bad people because you disagree with them. And I don't think that's legitimate. I think you say, I disagree with you about these 10 issues. But you're not part of a general club that uh, is, is always wrong, and I have the great vision and, and intelligence that I'm never wrong to identify you as that group in that good old boys club, which is the bad club. I think it's trying to reference that uh, there is uh, you know, relationships uh, in the legislature and there's relationships around the state where people work together and can you can agree or disagree with them, but I think the better thing to do is Identify the issues you agree with or disagree with and say, you know, I disagree with these people. Who are these people? Uh, if you say good old boys, it says I get to define this subset and, and I'm telling you they're bad. Well, tell us who you think's bad. Tell us who you think you disagree with. I don't think it's, uh, whether it's um, any candidate saying that, I, I just think it is a, a bad political technique and doesn't get us to uh, resolution or solutions. Talk about uh, government size, and you talked a little bit about a uh, number of employees. Uh, are you comfortable with the size of Wyoming state government? And as governor, would, what would you change regarding departments or duties? I think you have to, I mean, it, I, th I don't think we can just start officially say uh, we need this amount of employees. I think you have to be responsive to the current needs. Um, I think you, what we have done in reducing employees, a lot of those uh, or at least some of them were vacant positions that just weren't filled. And so collectively, part-time and full-time, we have about 300 less than we did when I started. But I, I don't want to say this is the number of employees we're going to have and we're never going to go above that uh, because we see needs rise. And I'll give you two examples. Uh, one is uh, we're working now uh, to uh, with a Nuclear reg Regulatory uh, Commission to get primacy on permitting. And if we do that and we say, hey, you don't have to have the state track and the federal track, you're just going to have the state track now, uh, we're going to require some more employees. And not one or two, but, you know, seven, eight, ten employees. I don't want to say, well, that's, I can't do that because that's over my mark because it's good for the state of Wyoming. We've seen on the issue of um, um, OSHA uh, uh, consultants, inspectors, uh, you know, we added those people, and uh, we're having a little trouble keeping some of them, as you know. But that was the right thing to do. And I think you don't want to say, we have this amount, and, well, we need OSHA people, but it would be over my cap, and so we're not going to do it. Or we need more people to work on nuclear permitting uh, issues, uh, uranium uh, permitting issues, and so we're, we're, we're not going to do that. Um, you know, things come up uh, that uh, require us to, to respond to those. Uh, and so you want to be efficient. You don't want to have more than you need, but you want to have all that you need uh, because if you value uh, what the work is, you also say you need people to do it. That's the last of my questions. That's the last of my questions. Questions for you, Tony, anything? No? Oh. <laughs> well, great. Well, in closing, uh, Give you a chance to make a closing statement and then tell us why we should vote for you instead of your opponents. Well, um, I w I'll tell you why uh, I would ask for the Wyoming voters' uh, support. You know, the I view the job as governor of, of tackling all issues uh, that, that affect the state of Wyoming. Uh, some of those, uh, you know, that hit your desk, as I think is in the private sector, you wish that issue wouldn't hit your desk. But you're here to make decisions, and you're here to make decisions that you have to start with what is best for Wyoming now, what is best for Wyoming in the future. 
that's where it starts. And you're going to have to be able to make popular and unpopular decisions. And as I think I've told you before, I view this as a job. You get in, you do your best, and, and you get out, and then you turn it over to, to the next person. And starting right uh, in 2011, uh, you know, we, I think uh, the office and myself have been very proactive attacking issues. Uh, I've talked about floods. I've talked about fires. I've talked about looking at the budget, uh, how we go about doing it, developing the energy strategy, uh, the water strategy, trying to figure out how to streamline government, uh, trying to deal with issues that, um, you know, sometimes are, are not in terms of uh, people's priorities the highest, but they're important. You know, the homeless issue, uh, trying to have a 10-year plan to address homelessness in Wyoming, uh, you know, it sometimes doesn't get a lot of important uh, news coverage, uh, but, you know, when you see vets and you see your citizens, uh, it's something that we, sh we should be addressing. And so I know, as I've been asked uh, many times in different interviews, you know, have you made mistakes? Uh, I have, and then the question is, uh, are you going to make more mistakes? I will. Uh, I'm not saying vote for me because I'm going to uh, provide perfection. What I say is, if you look where the state was, uh, you know, we're with a little below 7% unemployment. We have a little above 4% unemployment, second fastest growing GDP, second most business friendly state, highest credit rating uh, that uh, you can have, lowest tax state. We've uh, got more people working in the state of Wyoming now, uh, uh, Wyoming citizens, than ever in our history. Uh, we have added to savings, and we've been able to put back into the state uh, uh, local government funding and economic funding that has not only helped build the economy, but importantly has provided a diversity, a diversity to help against the highs and lows of uh, our big three industries, and a diversity that provides opportunities for our young people to give them more choices to say, here is a different type of career that I can have in Wyoming, and if I choose to stay here, uh, this is an opportunity. So uh, we compare the state to where we were, uh, to where we are. The fact of the matter is the state was in good shape uh, when I took it over, but we think we've added to that, and I think that's the role of the governor in making the hard decisions on every issue that, that comes through your door. It is not to put uh, issues on that bottom door and hope it goes away. Uh, you got to address them head on, and, and I think that's been my track record. Governor Mead, thanks so much for coming to this interview. Thanks. Thanks for having me here. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it.